Okay, now we come to the quintessential passage, proving that anybody who's preterist is a complete idiot and you just should walk away from him because whatever else he knows about Bible is being tainted even while he talks. I'm dead serious. All of us are getting something wrong about the Bible and something right about the Bible, and God has allotted, you know, a place for pretty much everybody. Okay, but understand that most people are retarded. So you've got retarded teachers and retarded students. And you know, retardation is also progressive. Okay, with human retardation, it's often, you know, not, um, what do you want to call it? Um, you can't do something about it. You're born that way. But retardation spiritually, hello? You can only be that way by choice. And obviously people who choose to be against the Jews are choosing to be retarded spiritually. Now take a few seconds and just look at that highlighted blue text. And because this is quintessential, you know, this is almost as bad as Revelation 7, which talks about the twelve tribes of Israel. If you can't read that in plain, even plain English translation or any other translation you like, then you can't read Bible. This one is just about as bad. Revelation 9 was a little sophisticated. Okay, but this one, you got to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to be able to read it. So go read it for a second. Okay, have you had enough chance to read it? You can call your attention to some key words there that, you know, when you think about them, it's like, oh, excuse me, how come I didn't notice that before? 1260 days closed in sackcloth. Now, your typical preterist takes the position that John wrote this book in 70 AD just after the temple went down, or maybe just before the temple went down, and everything in Revelation is already fulfilled. They get that from the Catholics. Calvinism is really just another form of Catholicism. Calvin loved Augustine. Augustine hated the Jews, like Origen did. Catholicism grew out of a need to fight the Jews, and it started all the way back with the church fathers. I mean, Justin Martyr, for example, is one of the most disgusting people who ever lived, if that really was him, as according to the writing. His dialogue with Trifo sh shows he's completely anti-Semitic. And he was out to destroy the Jews and out to make them look bad. I mean, if you spend your time writing as disgustingly as he did, if he really wrote that, then he, he lived for putting down the Jews. Okay? God curses you, therefore, Genesis 12, with no understanding of Bible. And now, highlighted in blue, Revelation 11. The preterist says this already happened? Really? 1260 days. That's very literal. 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. Now, of course, if you don't bother to learn anything about the Old Testament, you don't know that sackcloth is temple mourning clothes. Sackcloth is, was made out of like goat's hair. And it was you wore the hair on the inside to make you feel bad and itchy because you were in mourning and that was just the way that the Jews used they weren't the only ones but it was very common Semitic practice you know when somebody was in mourning to make a big megilla out of it and so they threw dust on their head and they wore sackcloth alright 
this was, you know, don't just leave me alone. I'm in mourning. They didn't bathe. Okay. Okay. So tell me when this has ever happened till yet. They will, two witnesses, okay, who prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. Has that happened till yet? Two witnesses, these are people who prophesy, that's the second criterion, for a set number of 1260 days, days, not years. And then see, two witnesses is criteria number one. They're people who prophesy. That's what they do, second criterion, for 1260 days. That's the third criterion. Clothed, clothed in sackcloth. Okay, hello, that has not happened till yet. And they are where? Outside the temple. But there is no temple. It was raised in 70 AD. See, the, see how blind and stupid the predators are? They're saying John wrote this in 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. Okay, but this is outside a temple that was what? Already destroyed? Then it's not outside the temple. You get that, don't you? In order to be outside the temple, there has to be a temple there. You got that. That means that the temple that got destroyed somehow gets rebuilt in order for there to be an outside of the temple. You got that. Now, this is a little more sophisticated. Measuring rod like a staff. If you go back to the Old Testament, which people who hate the Jews never do because they think, well, it's the Jews, so everything they thought and everything they wrote is no good. A measuring rod like a staff in Hebrew that the Bible is written in, and the Greek too. It had a lot of different meanings, but they all revolved around something foundational. And like for example, in Ezekiel, when the temple is authorized by God to be rebuilt, as opposed to here. In Ezekiel, an angel takes a rod to what? Measure the foundation of the temple. God then, at the second advent, authorizes be rebuilt. So John is, gi is given a measuring rod like a staff, not like, a, not like something you write with. Get up and measure the temple of God. In other words, measure it as if for a foundation. That's God is treating the temple that's built there. That isn't there built till yet even now. Hello. He's treating it as if it didn't exist. He's telling him, measure for the foundation. Because that was already promised at the second advent. He's being sarcastic here. This is a sarcastic way of saying, hi, I didn't authorize the temple that's standing there. So go measure it as if there were no temple there for a foundation. Preparatory to building. Just like the, the angel's going to be doing in Ezekiel 40. Because John is treated as a messenger. Angelos means a teacher, a messenger. Can stand for an angel or can stand for a pastor in the Bible. Okay, measuring rod. Okay, get up and measure the temple of God. Okay, even if you did not know God was being sarcastic. And even if you didn't know that measuring in the Old Testament that's used this way with these words means measuring for a foundation. The preterist is claiming that John writes this in 70 A.D., some of them even will admit that it's later. Yeah, it's written in the 90s AD. John tells you that in John in Revelation 1, 1 through 3. He tells you he's writing in the 90s AD. Flat. 
58 years after Paul wrote Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, and 84 years after Israel became a province. That's the meter he uses. Every beginning of a Bible book uses meter to tell you its dateline. Oh, but the scholars don't know that. But a brain owl could even count the syllables and know it. Okay, pretend you didn't know any of that. Okay, get up and measure the temple of God. Oh, but there's no temple now. See? There's no such thing as a post-trib, mid-trib, or non-rapture idea. There's no temple. Here, there is one, which God is sarcastically treating as if it didn't exist. Leave out the court which is outside the temple. In other words, there's a court that's outside a standing building. And during that time, there are these two guys who are standing outside this temple who prophesy for three and a half years clothed in sackcloth. Now tell me, have you seen these guys yet? No. Harold Camping's people thought that they were the two witnesses too. But these are two Jews standing outside the temple. Okay? Because they have the power to shut up the sky. Have you seen that happen yet? Hmm? First three and a half years of the tribulation, all this is going to happen. Okay? Anyone wants to harm them, fire is that flows out of their mouth. They're standing in front of the temple. Do you see that happening today? Uh, no. Have you seen it happening since the temple went down? No, because you know why? There is no temple. See? Leave out the court which is outside the temple. That means there's a temple standing. Get up and measure the temple. That means there's a temple standing. And even an altar. You see, this is why the Dispies are saying, Hi, you know, during the tribulation, the temple will be rebuilt. Or maybe before, really. Because the Bible doesn't say that it can't be rebuilt before. It's just saying that during the tribulation, it's standing. Not there now. Hasn't been since 70 A.D. Iola Capitolina was a pig temple built on top of the Holy of Holies. And of course the Muslims took over it since 610, 630. 630? 638. They finally finished building the temple in 685. But they built their temple, not the temple of God. That's not temple of God. Uh-oh. So what's standing there now is an abominating dome. And what's also standing there now is the wailing wall. And those are the only two witnesses we got. And they ain't talking, but they're saying a lot by being silent. And it's been a whole lot longer than 1260 days. And even if the stupid people who want to try and always turn days into years, it's been more than 1260 years, too. Whoops. And neither of those two buildings are clothed in sackcloth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire flows out of their mouth. Well, neither wall, neither buildings have mouths. And they're not devouring their enemies. So you don't get killed when you go to the Wailing Wall. And you don't get killed when you go into, you know, that mosque. Al-Aqsa. Not Al-Aqsa. What the heck is it called? It's got a funny name. It means rock, Dome of the Rock. Yeah, the rock is Christ. That's what's so you know, 
Satan's laughing his head off every time he looks at Jerusalem. And of course, it's in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Land of who? The Jews. Not Christianity. The Jews. So none of this is happening yet. None of it. None of this is happening yet. None of it has happened until yet. The Right? This hasn't happened yet. Okay, now what? We remember what we saw in Revelation 9? When they, the two witnesses, right up here, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that came out from the abyss, that's Revelation 9. Remember, they come out at the beginning of year 3. They got 5 months, so this is 3.6 months. He makes war with them and kills them. Who? The two witnesses. We're standing in front of what? The temple that what? Does not exist at this time. So this is all future. Not today. Duh! And then what happens? Oh, this hasn't happened yet. Then the dead bodies of the two witnesses. Their bodies. Their people. Not the wailing wall and abominating dawn. They lie in the street of the great city, that's Jerusalem, which is mystically called Sodom in Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. See, it's in Jerusalem. Not somewhere else. And there ain't no Jewish temple in Jerusalem right now. Only the wailing one. Those from all the tribes will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days. And they'll be so excited about them finally being dead, they won't let them be buried. Has that happened yet? No. After three and a half days, they resuscitate. And then God says, just like he said to John in Revelation 4.1, which was the rapture event, come up here. And then they went up to heaven. And then, and then a tenth of the city fell, 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified. That did not happen in 70 AD. None of this happened in 70 AD. So it's not past, it's future. And there's no church, and it's not about church. It's about Israel. See, you have to be completely an idiot, which means you're completely carnal. You have to be completely incompetent not to be able to read Revelation 11 and say, hey, you know what, that's not happened yet. Preterism is toast. The rapture doctrine is pretty sophisticated and there's a lot to it and it actually starts the basis for it starts in Genesis 5 because the basis for it is how God orchestrates time. But even if you don't know that doctrine, you can't look at Revelation 7, Revelation 9, Revelation 11, Genesis 12, Genesis 15 and 17 and not realize how low God made a promise to the Jews. And here it's talking about the Jews. It is not talking about church. And this hasn't happened yet. Wait till you see the next increment.